Thank you so much, Tracy. I've got now great pleasure to introduce our next guest, Tassita Dean. Um, Tassita is an artist born in 1965 in England, lives now uh, in Berlin. Um, so many, many exhibitions, but also won many prizes. The Six Vanessa Prize at the Venice Biennale, the Hugo Boss Prize, the recent solo exhibitions at the Australian Center for Contemporary Art and the Fondazione Nicola Trussardi. Um, Tassida was one of the protagonists of the Lorca exhibition in Granada, so our dialogue about poetry has been going on for a long time, and has also worked um, on a film and has had many dialogues with the poet Michael Hamburger. A very warm welcome to Tassida Dean. In 2006, I, in 2006, I, I filmed the um, poet Michael Hamburger, who uh, um, was also a translator of a lot of uh, German poetry into English. And um, when Hans asked me to do this, I thought the best thing would be to do would be to just read three of his poems. Um, they're very difficult to read. <laughs> I've been practicing. Um, he was born in Berlin and had to leave in 1933. Um, to the Germans, he's Michael Hamburg, and he's very important to them because of the translating of Hodelin and Paul Celan and other poets into, into English and even during the Second World War. And um, they call him, well, I, I spoke to someone who called, called him an angel in a way because of um, what he did in terms of the transporting of German poetry into the English language. So I have three Michael Hamburger books, and I'm going to read one from each. This one I found in Berlin. It's um, it's uh, um, when he was on the DAAD, which was the, the, the institution that brought me to Berlin and why I still live there. And, and this poem is from 1969. Is called Roses Chrysanthemums. It's late in the day, in the year, the frost holding off just. In the garden you pick dry stalks hardly looking. Time to come in, time to pick flowers, only now and carry them in. Summer and autumn bunched, toward winter, even the full roses petals in no hurry to fall. It is a slow music we hear behind the wind, and the chrysanthemums are a slow fire, a red so dark it glimmers and would go out but for the yellow that radiates from the core. Ruffled flutterings here, a harsh odour as of wood smoke, and there flesh colour, silky, taut in its bland breathing, linger and mingle. Now, only now. So that's from 1969. Uh, when I filmed him, um, he, he found it very, very difficult to talk about poetry at, at all, and also about autobiography, his own autobiography. So in, uh, but the one passion that, in fact, the film became about was his passion for apples. And um, in, this, in the film, he actually picks this deep, dark red apple that was given to him, the pips of which an apple was given to him by Ted Hughes. And he grew, from the pips of the apple, he grew uh, two beautiful full trees. So um, this is the poem that he reads, sorry, it's probably a bit. This is the poem that he reads in the film. <coughs> Written the day uh, Ted Hughes died. For Ted Hughes, October 29th, 1998. After gale and flood on the brink of winter, I see a faint half moon haloed in haze half earthly. The huntress's light, artemis, delicate as a cat in her art of killing, 
self-contained as a cat, adored for that, seducer to sacrifice. But mornings, Apollos and Aphrodites, cruelly two shines on the planters, the breeders of perishing cattle, crops. Then it is love that hurts, not the coldness. Both he must serve who was born in high summer, compelled to mother the children half orphaned, magnanimous helper, friend. Eaten this day, I'm sorry, uneaten this day of his death. In either light the dark Devonshire apples lie that from seed, seed I raised on a harsher coast in remembrance of him and his garden. Difference filled out the trees, hardened, mellowed the fruit to outlast our days. And this uh, is circling the squares, the last um, collection he published. He died in, um, last year. It's called The Winter Visit, and it's written in 2005. The Winter Visit. More sudden than any spring memory could invent, completion came with November's full moon, in whose rays, their white hair gleaming, nonagenarian couple on sticks, they hobbled off again from our door. That morning for us who waited, poor frost pallor it was, the low sun through clouds aglow, death-colored leafage retained, until towards noon, a damped sky blue winter's radiance took over, a rooftop, a treetop shone. Dubious hours passed inexplicably. They'd made a detour, stopped at the sea, parked on a sand cliff marked for obliteration, as though for confirmation by looking that sooner or later this land, these walls, would be water. When he since youth had said, best not to be born or dead, yet worked and worked and worked, in his eighties jogged to keep the current unclogged. <coughs> then across 65 years of meetings, distances between blocked ears, the talk hobbled, shuffled. His gasped out in whispers, for he was weary well before night of all flotsam, <coughs> about to sink. Hers more inquiring, still bright, against the now fading light. Of completion too hard won, so little lift, so le little left to be done, but the broken, snagged journey taken. The words unspeakable spoken by presence alone on this brink. <laughs>